people will come in and they'll say how beautiful this place is. And um, it's a collective expression of so many people. There's, and, and, and that expression is them putting their hand to the plow because of this great love that they've received from Christ. So to him be all the glory and honor and praise. I would like to introduce you to the leaders of the Life Center. Some of you are new to us, and some of you are not aware who's who. Um, Choi was really, he's such a good artist, gosh. Um, he was really quick to say that it's not finished. There's bits and pieces that are left, but some of that information will be available online. Uh, we do have a visitor's um, pamphlet as well. But today, um, in Sharon Landis's absence, I want to tell you who she is and what she does. Sharon is our outreach ministry. She is currently in a, um, up north with her family. Her mother has passed away and is in glory. She told me upon her passing that mom's singing with the angels. It's so good to be able to say that. Amen. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. so, so good. Uh, we know... Um, we don't have to despair like others do because we will live forever. That's a beautiful promise from God. Um, she's not with us today, but she is a dynamic, kingdom-minded woman. And uh, currently she's going through a physical challenge of which she's already been healed of. We're thanking God for that and enjoying very good reports from her doctor, who is an oncologist. If you um, are not familiar with her, she had a bout, and she is absolutely doing phenomenal. We're so yeah. excited. Do you expect anything different? Mm -mm. No, no, nor do I. Um, but she's not with us today, but in her absence, I would like to say thank you. I would also, um, um, I can't speak for her. We'll give her an opportunity to do that. But I, I want to say in her time of need is when I think the body of Christ comes together. So any, you know, emails or encouragements at this time would be great. You guys have been awesome. She is overwhelmed with the love that has flooded her. Again, humbled again by the people at TLC. It's been stunning. Um, is my uh, PowerPoint on? The powers that be? Ooh. Ooh. Here we go. <laughs> the little girl's like, again? I need a PowerPoint. Okay. So um, the first couple I want to bring up, and I know... <coughs> I shouldn't do this because I told her I was going to bring her up last. But um, I have to say, the, the people that we've known the longest in our walk is Doug and Christy Mungin. Where's Doug? Where's Doug? Douglas? Get him. He's serving. There he is. <laughs> He's held back. Yeah. Yeah, they could just stay out there. That could stay out there for a while, yeah. Um, Doug and Christy, come, come to the seats of Expose. We Ooh. will be examining you today. <laughs> You are fine. Do we have a spotlight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I need this mic on for them. Please, pretty please, sugar on top. No, agave nectar on top, please. <laughs> you don't want to sit? You, you scared? Okay, sit. sit. I will sit. I'll be like Oprah. <laughs> um, Christy and Doug, well, first of all, Poppy, I'm so sorry. Do you want to come up? <laughs> I actually yeah, didn't intend to sit. This is not no, planned. I'm okay. okay, you're good. Some um, stuff start might happen, and I want to stay here. I don't um, know. We've been together forever. We, our home group, what, 12 years ago? You think 14? Something like that. Well, Long time. Okay. We've watched them grow in children and in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, selfless servants, um, very self-abasing. Doug is just somebody who is, um, you know, aggressive with justice. He loves righteousness. And He's been a wingman for David for a very long time. Um, they grew up with each other. They trained with each other at our last service stop at uh, New Life Christian Ministries. And Christy is why everything is so kind of like organized around here, and it's in its place, and the closets look great. And only not above that, but she is the creative crafts director, game director. She's a dear, dear friend of mine, a sweet loved sister. And she hates to talk in the microphone, so you just have to clap one time, kind of work her up, work her up. Woo, 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 woo. And uh, we had a meeting yesterday, which they couldn't be here because a lovely young uh, couple w were married. And um, but I told them that they were going to come up and just tell a little bit about what you've seen, what you project, um, kind of 
what you see for TLC. And I know if you want to give it to Doug first, that's cool. I told her, I told her, I said, I'll have a few people come before you so you can get a little bit, and sure enough, right up the chute. <laughs> see, there, you got to be ready in season, out of season, right? Amen. Okay, hit it. <laughs> Don't be shy. Seriously. <laughs> Go ahead. What's changed? What do you want to see? What do you like? We feel very blessed and even honored just to be a part of TLC. Um, let's see. Upcoming? Mm -hmm. um, no. This coming year, I see us um, as activities director with much more, um, I don't want to say, stuff going on all the time that, that youth, I really want to get youth involved and we're a, we're a church of celebration, so lots of parties, food, games. I, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. That's good. Yeah. You pick on me for not wanting to talk, but did you see yourself in that video? <laughs> I usually don't have to say anything. <laughs> because. Me too. I have a there, talker too. There, we yeah. have enough words for the family. <laughs> Douglas. Clean it up. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting to do this. Um, I just know I'm, I'm a part of greatness when I'm here. And I think that, just as Christy said, we are honored. We've always been honored to know Pastor Dave and Pastor Kathy and um, just to hang out. And um, I got to know Pastor Dave and Pastor Kathy, as they said, in, that sm in the small group. And, um, and that's essentially what this, this just feels like, a big small group. Because <laughs> and I know that's what they were shooting for for the atmosphere and the fact of, of they just overflow with love. And um, there again, all that overflow flowed onto us and it just flows onto other people. But like I said, um, just honored. I mean, without doubt, that, that's the only word I can really think of right now. Yeah. And um, just greatness is just upon this church. And, and yeah. that's all I see coming yeah. forth is greatness and just getting bigger. Not just getting bigger, but um, becoming um, uh, stronger. Yeah. The roots are down, and they're going deeper, but just branching out, and I think that's what's about to take place today with, from what I understand. I wasn't yeah. here for the meeting, but um, just setting forth people, um, not just people, but pastors. Yeah. So. Now, um, I know you may not know this about these two, but Doug is a pastor. He's a pastor here at this church. We consider him a pastor. Um, so it wouldn't be inappropriate in any way to say pastor Doug or Pastor Mungan, um, that is absolutely applicable. He went through the training. I He's my been. Kids say it all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I, per I prefer Reverend. Yeah. <laughs> he is credentialed, but we love them and we want to thank them and thank the Lord for him. Thank you, guys. Thank you a lot. Yeah, we're going to call you back up to the communion here in a minute. Um, I want to call up now. You do the, the next. Um, the next contestants, <laughs> Brian and Rita. Come on up. You come up. Come on up. Brian, uh, Brian is also a pastor here. We're not focusing on, um, we, we want to call out and kind of set forth some pastors that are in training right now because we didn't train these guys. We're in fellowship with these guys and Doug as well. But it's, it's a, a thing that we're now requiring our pastors to do to spend time with us on a bi-weekly basis for us to train and in um, part mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean anything less anything more from Brian he's done the training he showed himself faithful yes and therefore he wears the mantle of pastor mm -hmm. I, I don't he never looked for a title I think somebody that's looking for a title gets a great parking spot you know mm -hmm. Maybe. And maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. You know, I heard a guy say once that I have a parking spot right up front. I'm like, what time do you get to your church? I get here at 8 o'clock. I got 80 parking spots I can <laughs> park in. I don't uh -huh. need my name on a parking spot. But anyway, um, these they guys are... have sought the spirit of the Lord, not, the, uh, not titles, not any of that. They're currently in charge of our, we've started off calling it our healing ministry. I want it to go toward healing prayer ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I always want to focus on healing. Yeah. Um, it's what our communities need. We need to be healed. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus changed communities by walking in and changing one person's life, and it yeah. changed communities. So Yeah, it's healing marriages, healing bodies, yeah. healing emotions, healing past hurts. I mean, there's, there's a, a ton here, and you can speak a little bit more to that. But um, they, and again, another powerful group of people, mm -hmm. Anna and 
um, anime. Uh, huh? anime. Anime and they, the Bittners, they're, they're on their way up. They, they're a coalition of people that are, um, and, and Miss Kimberly, I see you over there. Um, why don't you share a little bit about what you see and what you project? And whatever you want to share. Just tell us something. Just <laughs> yeah. tell us whatever you want to say. And it doesn't have to be how much I love TLC. Yeah. Uh, where, where are you going? You know, where are you going in, in ministry and in life now? And what's the Lord doing in your life, really? I'm, I feel very privileged to be part of TLC. Okay, I mean, this, this <laughs> not, not, I'm, I'm, good, I'm, I'm good with it. I got to start out that way. <laughs> I'm just playing That's with good. you, Brian. It's all right. I will say this, looking at that video clip of you two, that uh, uh, evidently hair color keeps you looking younger. <laughs> evidently. You're saying I look older. Yeah. Uh, I, I still have those pants, by the way. I, okay. I, uh, I think it's, uh, for me, it's a great thing to be part of this church and to be part of the healing team or the prayer team. I work for the government, so. so yeah, <laughs> that, that yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, Change, we're, we're used to instant changes. This is an instant change. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, what I see is uh, a definite explosion of uh, growth in this area. And the idea of the, the healing prayer team is um, to actually meet the needs of the community. I mean, this is, this is a community in need like many communities. Yeah. And I think TLC will be the the center point of all the needs being met in the area and it's going to grow i mean you're going to see an explosion in this yeah. very soon i think yeah. myself yeah. i mean it uh it not to sound like an old person but the end is getting near i mm -hmm. mean it you you can see it more and more and uh it this the pouring out of the power of god is definitely coming upon us Amen. i mean and we are we are seeing things happening that people can't explain mm -hmm. and we're going to see more of that in this church as far as uh, healing of yep. people's lives and their uh, health and everything else. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you. I just want to say that if you're not coming on Thursdays, you're missing something. Yeah. Um, I made it a point Thursday night to go up personally and speak with everyone that Brian and I had prayed for. And one of our per people that came actually told me that she had felt the Holy Spirit three times in her life, and that night was the third time. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is here. Mm -hmm. His presence is being shown, and people that are coming are receiving him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Bless, bless you. you. Bless you. Yeah. Who's next on the list? We had, uh, we had Rosh Hashanah last week. We had a lot of visitors because Neshima was here, and a guy that I've known for a long time, state uh, policeman in uh, um, Maryland. He, I hadn't seen him for quite some time, and he was here, and he was kind of hanging out in the uh, foyer, you know, after everything was done. I said, oh, man, I'm glad I caught you. You didn't get away. I wanted to hug you one more time. And he goes, Dave, I can't leave here. I just feel God so much in this building. I just wanted to hang out and, and soak up all I could before I walked back out again. So uh, that has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with how, accept how ex uh, receivable we are to what he wants in our life. That's, that's, that's all it is. I think the presence it's flows out of us. Yeah, I don't think, I know. And so it's just you guys being vulnerable and open. I want to bring up. Kathy and Dave, can yeah, you, can, per, can you, you know, come up there? Dave and Are you with child? I see that you pass <laughs> on. Bittners, come on up. These guys, Dave and Kathy Bittner, give them a clap. Now they should get a sash and a ribbon, these guys. They've, they, yes, they've uh -huh. been with us forever. They are absolute wonderful examples of God's love. They have um, secured, I, I can't even tell you, I, I, Kathy is so important to me. There's many times that she's come to me and the Lord sent her at just the right time to minister just the right word. But her husband is one of the most um, sensitive, strong pillars that I know. Uh, yesterday he was talking about how proud he was of everyone, but I want you to know how proud we are of you. Dave works with children, and he is Christ to them, literally Christ to them. I mean, his heart is for them. The job is very difficult, but he's compelled by love for these children, and you want to know we have men and women like this in our school systems. I mean, it's just so good. And, and Kathy has communion on her desk in her office, and women come in and they say, I just love them. They're great examples. They're steadfast. They've been faithful in every way to this church. And you're indispensable to us, and you can't leave. <laughs> you, everybody else can go, you can't. No. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you see. 
I just see us as a church um, who, um, as a body, have come to believe the promises of God, not just to read them, but to actually believe them and believe that what he says is true and that where he says we can go, we can go. Amen. And, and uh, just freedom and um, ability to encourage each other in that and to, um, to just go with the Holy Spirit. I just feel like this is um, just a, a, a precious place to be and that um, someone said before like a big small group <laughs> I mean we you know um, I just would love to know everybody in a much more intimate way than we do as, just we're, as we're getting bigger that's going to get more difficult but honestly there's just such a love here even though we don't maybe know each other um, as well as we'd like to you know I just pray that the Lord will show us a way to do that better and to commune more and Amen. we're just yeah it's going to be important in these days mm -hmm. you know to just have people that you know you can count on yeah. and that are walking in the spirit and wanting to grow in the spirit and he has so much good so many good things for us yet to come oh my goodness we we we've only just begun amen. scratch the surface and so i'm excited about that amen amen uh, we've been on this ride with kathy and dave from the very <laughs> beginning yes. and it's been a pleasure because when we came back from Haiti as missionaries we were looking for a family for a church family and you guys are our family yeah. we we love you guys, and I hope that's imparted from our hearts to you. And uh, I'm just so grateful because what we're learning is to walk in grace here. You know, it's, that's tremendous because when you understand that grace in your lives, you're no longer under condemnation. So we're getting fed. We're getting taught that. We're, we're learning not to point people to rules but to Jesus yeah. and, and to be set free and to know who you are in Christ so you can appropriate all that mm -hmm. so we can walk anew so we're growing together as a family you know and it's fantastic yeah. you know our pastors are leading us and they're feeding us and showing us the way we just need to walk mm -hmm. it out mm -hmm. and we have jesus who who is leading us and so that's exciting I, you know i i don't like religion i grew up with religion and a religious spirit and i'm set free Amen. <laughs> and Amen. i'm enjoying this ride with this group of people um my passion is um, one, the healing ministry. We're involved in that, and I believe that with all my heart that we're going to see this place change because yeah. people are going to hear what's Amen. happening in this building. Not because of us, but his goodness yeah. because he, that's our goal, to heal the sick, mm -hmm. raise the dead. And so it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're walking it out, it is, and you yeah. join us. It's a wonderful spirit on Thursday nights mm -hmm. when we have that. Mm -hmm. You just come and you're set free. Yeah. My other passion is missions. And um, I guess the, my goal, you know, we're elders and we're getting elderly, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, my goal is to see us as a church get involved in not just local missions. I love that here because we're to, to minister here in our community. But I would like to see us, and I would like to take a group of people to be involved in ministry where women and children are being trafficked. And so my heart's goal is to eventually take a group and go and yeah. see what people are having to live through and to realize that they can be set free. So I'm going to be yeah. quiet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you, Love you guys. Dave, you know, Dave and Shirley Pittman, would you all please start coming up? <clears throat> it's funny when we look through our congregation body we have every gift we have everything already everything available need. every personality available to us to achieve whatever it is that we want to achieve in life don't you love them come on man i just can't even love them anymore dave is an associate pastor with us and uh, we did that about two years ago he's been a pastor all his life you know you can't you, you look at what people are doing when you think about you don't, you don't attach things to them or just give them something to do. You watch their behavior. He's been a very um, good friend to David and to myself and a, a really great uh, comfort. I remember when you guys first came, uh, you came in, I think, from Florida and, um, or somewhere like that, and um, you, you sat us down. You said, we would like to talk to you. And we're like, oh, we were just having such a tumultuous time the first mm -hmm. two years of people just being unhappy on a daily basis. And they just came in to tell us 
like a breath of fresh air that we believe that this is where we want to serve. Can we help you? And we were like, really? <laughs> really? I'm like, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tell us. We love you, so tell us a little bit, Shirley. Well, I'll speak for myself. This has just been a beautiful um, and wonderful experience for me. We love Pastor Kathy and Dave. It's so safe and so beautiful here. Um, David and I were pastor's kids. We cut our teeth on the church pews. And in 2000, <laughs> uh, Literally. Literally. 2006, we came to the place where we were tired of religion. We had had enough. And I was working at Fuddruckers restaurant, and a lady came in one day, never saw her, and she looked at me and she goes, where do you go to church? And I told her. She said, that's a good place, I've been there. Did you ever hear of the Life Center? And I said, never, where is that? She said, Green Castle, you need to go there, you would love it. So I said, okay, we will, and we did shortly after. And we've been here ever since. You know, this is where <laughs> God wants us. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a breeding ground. Mm -hmm. This is a breeding ground for miraculous healings and supernatural signs of the Holy Spirit. And the best is yet to come. I'm Amen. so excited. I can hardly stand. <laughs> I love her. I just want to eat her. <laughs> I love her too, so <laughs> I love her more than <laughs> you. <laughs> wow. Uh, may I have a little bit of lead here to talk about the hospitality. Uh, sure. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Please, please. Anyway, there, there's two other people before I, I share with you what the Lord has shared with me. There's two people here that aren't here today. <clears throat> They're outstanding people. They head up the hospitality ministry here at TLC. Linda Briggs, she just does a phenomenal job. You see all the beautiful decorations around here. She's the one that's in charge of that. Uh, the, the cafe, she sets all of our, 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 our breaking of breads, all of our, our activities and things up as well. And she's just a remarkable, remarkable woman. Yeah. And she wouldn't be that way without her lovely husband, Amen. of course. <laughs> but really, Kenny does a lot around her. People don't even realize. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he plants flowers. He takes care of the outside. And he's Linda's number one servant. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I just want to give them a big round of applause. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And I know if she would be here today, she would be so pleased. Because uh, up to about two years ago, uh, I'm a servant at heart, and we had very few people that would get involved in, and do certain things. Mm -hmm. But the hospitality uh, ministry here has really blossomed, mm -hmm. and that wouldn't be made possible without the individuals that used to be a little bit of wallflowers, but now really have accepted their responsibility and ownership of this ministry and have stepped out. And so I know I get in trouble sometimes of naming names, names mm -hmm. but if, uh, and if I miss you, I'm sorry. But there's Katie and John Ferguson back yeah, there. Yeah, thank you. I can remember when they first came to this ministry, they just kind of sat back there and, and uh, just uh, took it all in, but they really have taken ownership of this ministry. And I thought Johnny and Katie were going to take off dancing here a little while ago. I mean, yeah. John was just about ready to cut a rug. So, uh, I mean, they're part of that ministry. And, and also Diane. Diane Martin yes, there is, Diane is a Martin. remarkable woman. I mean, she used to, you would say boot to her, and she'd run and hide. Now she really gives it to you. But she's... <laughs> She really has, uh, has really uh, helped this ministry tremendously. And the cafe, which now has been manned by three beautiful young ladies that we have here. I think it's Rachel, I think it's Aurora, and it's Sarah. Can, can I have just some stand just, are they, are they stand up just for a moment. Uh, Come on, Rachel. Stand up. Ra stand Rachel stand up is shy like her mother. And Aurora, and Kara. And Aurora. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Up, 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 up. Kirsten, <laughs> they Thank have you. done such a remarkable job. And you Thank know, when we, we started to put this all into motion, uh, I was a little scared, and I'm sure Kathy and, and, and Dave was as well, to just knowing uh, how things were going to outcome, but they've done a remarkable uh -huh. yeah. job. Thank you, guys. And Thank there's you. other things when we Thank went through the, the building project here. Individuals have stepped up. Uh, things we ha need to have done, insulation tore down. Mm -hmm. We had painting that had to be done. We had other uh, 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 carpentry work for Mike and, and so, uh, some of the other men here. We really, really appreciate that yeah, tremendously. Yeah. Not right. to mention the blue balls as well, because I can remember, it was a Trish? 
uh, come in here with her husband. Yeah. I don't know how many evenings yeah. Tony Jody. had worked Jody. Jody. endlessly. Jody. Jody. And uh, I want you to know, you know, I really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. it's remarkable what the Lord has done just yeah. in the last two years. Yeah. We used to have to try to beg people to get involved. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're not doing anything, I'm going to beg you now. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many things, and it really what it shows to the pastors and the pastoral staff and the leadership here is you're actually taking ownership of this ministry. Mm -hmm. You say, I belong, I want to be part of it, I believe in what they're doing, and we are so, uh, so glad to have that happen over the last uh, uh, several years. Wow. Yeah. Now, getting back to, to, to myself here, I've really been blessed by this ministry, and... Um, been involved in several ministries down through the years. I really won't go there because I've always supported the individuals that God have placed over, over, over me. Mm -hmm. And I can remember sitting down with Dave and Kathy. And I told them a little bit about our past. Mm -hmm. And I uh, never spoke of, of the negative part of ministry. I always spoke of the positive part of ministry. Because my dad was a believer. Uh, no matter where you go, uh, you can eat the meat and leave the bones. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of meat here in yeah, this ministry. Amen. I've really grown tremendously here uh, in the six years, mm -hmm. I can't, which I can't hardly believe that we've been seven years, almost, almost seven, mm -hmm. the year of completion. So uh, grown tremendously. Uh, I just want to give you a little bit of what I see happening. Like my wife said, I really believe we're going to see the, the absolute miracles and miraculous happen. I actually, the Lord has showed me in a vision, and I shared that with someone. I think it was this past, uh, this past uh, week. Uh, when we were involved in the healing and prayer ministry, that they're going to be actually lined up outside the door. Yeah, and, uh, and it's Amen. coming. Amen. Uh, the world really doesn't have anything to offer. Yeah. And the only reason we have it here is because we're bringing you Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Amen. so I just want everyone to, I, I want to say thank you. I'm, we're charged the, uh, the life groups, which now have really blossomed. Mm -hmm. We have three active groups. We're possibly getting ready to start another one. And if you're not in those life groups, believe me, you need to be there because that's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to mature. And that's where you're going to nurture other individuals as well. So yeah. I just want to say thank you, Dave and Kathy. Thank you. I love you so much. And we're in it for the long haul. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Daniel Barrett. Whoop, whoop. And lovely wife, Carol. Carol, bring a child if you can. Oh, they You're going to bring one if you want to or not. <laughs> she, she, she has two of them. Braggers. They're the reason we're in the month of September. Uh, <laughs> well, these guys are really our spiritual children. We have had so many um, encounters. We got to marry them. We were... Um, we've been together from the inception when Dan came in, but here's a man that is truly a pastor. Um, his heart is for community. His heart is about love. You know, you know we would think that you know, the, the world's problem is abortion or the world's problem is economic or the world's problem is, the world's problem is goodness. And Jesus went around doing good, good and healing all those who were sick and oppressed of the devil. And so these are two great examples of good and their heart is to do good and we love you tell us a little bit about what's going on <laughs> what's going on yeah um really and they're going to have mr neil and jamie smith come up here a little bit um, but neil has decided what well, neil asked if he could take over the children's ministry so carol and i came alongside them or underneath them and are, are basically we are working in the children's ministry um, with the Smiths, what they're going to be coming up I'm sure soon. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously our life right now, our ministry is children. Mm -hmm. um, the fourth one's on the way and they're young mm -hmm. and, and so that's where we um, as a family really believe that we want to seek and, and really sink our roots deep into, and I believe that, I've always believed that, but now that I'm there, I see it, how important that foundation is. Mm -hmm. How important it is to not only just talk about Jesus, but that your kids experience, see Jesus mm -hmm. in their parents, see parents who are able to humble themselves and apologize, and see parents who are able to, to see the good in the world and not complain about all the bad in the world. Um, and so... We love TLC. We are so blessed to be a part of this community. We've been here since the very beginning. Um, Pastor Dave and Kathy are the best leaders I've ever seen mm -hmm. and experienced and known. Um, they're our best friends. 
our best leaders. Um, and the thing is, when we say these words like leadership, I think, I mean, I know I always revert back to the world's example of leadership, which is power and authority and ruling and all this mm-hmm. stuff, but it's not that at all. You know, it's a servanthood. You died yourself. Yeah. You know, Jesus says the least of you will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I mean, and I see that all over these two. And um, they, 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 we are disciples of Christ, but there are shepherds here on earth, you know. And, and we are so honored here. Everybody in this room, we're, we should be honored to be able to follow these guys. Um, personally, I know, I, I don't even know, like, I know that there's flesh, flesh in me that I wrestle with occasionally. <laughs> and for me, I think, a lot of times I think, uh, I just think about things that, 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 that come up in me that are not of Christ and how, I don't know if this is making any sense, but there's just times I really, I always feel the Christ in me raising up and just giving a lot of thanks to this community. And there's a lot of gratitude towards Pastor Dave and Kathy. Um, there's a lot of love that, that I, I think that I just, we just continue to just, they are such a blessing in our lives. You know what I mean? I just can't imagine. So, that's it. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Carol, nothing? Just about kids in ministry school. I'm sure when Neil and Jamie come up, they'll talk more about kids in ministry, but we're looking for people to come and volunteer, um, as always. It's a lot of fun, but especially if you have kids. I know a lot of people need, you need fed. If you have kids, you need fed. Everyone does. Um, but if your kids are in kids' ministry, we ask that you at least volunteer. You don't have to teach a class. You don't have to, you know, take charge of any, anything, but just take one Sunday every two months or so, get in the rotation, just be in nursery. That's how you can get to know the kids. That's how the kids can see you. That's how you get to know the other moms and dads and people at the church because you're locked in a room with a few kids <laughs> and some adults, and you need some adult conversation, and, and that's just how you get Me. to know them. Yeah. So. Sign up if your kids are in kids' ministry on a pretty regular basis. If you don't volunteer, I'm a mom. I'll come find you and <laughs> tell you that you need to get on the rotation or whatever. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, Love you. Okay. All I, right. I, I heard a pastor, uh, I read a lot of books for training and things like that, and a pastor said that if you dropped your child off to us more than twice, you are now in the kids' ministry. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, your name will be on the rotation. I'm not quite that abrupt. but Thank you for affording us this opportunity to introduce you to the leaders. Um, the next two leaders that are coming up are Justin and Rachel. Neil, you're last. Justin and Rachel are going to come up now and share a little bit of their heart. They've been with us also from the beginning. We watched them married. We watched them bear fruit. We're so um, very grateful for their time with us. Um, Lots of beautiful things to come. Want a daddy? Oh, all better. This house a little. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh man, I hate going first. Um, we're the worship leaders. <laughs> um, I guess what I see for the future is um, we are praying for additional members, um, additional leaders, and um, we know there's talent sitting out here, um, but Justin and I are not the type of people that are going to come and bombard you. Um, We want you, if you want to participate, please come to us. Um, Practice is at 8 o'clock on Sunday, and if you would... (laughs) Yes, I know. (laughs) Yes. For those of you who don't know, I'm 18 weeks pregnant, uh-huh. so um, I have been a little sick. Uh-huh. So I have not yet. <laughs> yeah. So 2014 for me will be a lot different because I'll have two little ones. But anyways, um, we would love uh, additional members in the worship ministry. We would love, um, we see eventually as we get bigger, obviously there will be more talent that comes in. And our goal um, one day is to have multiple teams. I mean, we... It is not about us being up here. Um, and we hope that um, our plan with our daughter is to um, give her lessons, not from us, but from other people, because um, we were both trained musicians from others. And we hope that um, even as you grow your children, that if you find an interest, that 
um, there's lessons out there for them, and we can have youth uh, bands. I mean, it's it's seriously not about us, and we just, um, but we're very, very, very grateful for how wonderful this church is, and we love each and every one of you. We love serving. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just, it's our heart's desire, I think, to create a presence and an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can move. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Golf clap, golf clap, Doug Cannon. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. The, the, the thing that kind of uh, resonates with me a lot recently is, is this. Um, Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man, right, Neil? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he's coming back. And when he comes back, the earth is going to be in a pretty sad state of affairs, and it's going to take a thousand years to rebuild the infrastructure to how it's supposed to be. And we all should, God willing, be taking part of that. And one of the most important things that's going to happen is the rebuilding and, and, and the placing of the temple in Jerusalem as the, the primary place where, where we show God how much he means to us. And that usually means 24-7 worship. David did it with the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Hopefully we try to do it with our little half an hour a week here. But um, I really hope that, that, that this isn't just, hey, we're coming in, we're loving on God, and, and that's it for the week. I, I really hope that, that we see this as training for that. We're supposed to be high priest. High priest went and served at the temple at least five weeks every year. That's us, people. So I, I, I really hope that, that, that there's, there's a joy in the service, but not only a joy, but, but a seriousness in, in realizing that, that this just isn't, this isn't just something that we come and do. This is something that, that God takes very seriously, and, and we're going to be given responsibilities there. And I want us to be prepared. And, and, and you know, like Rachel said, yes, love to see the, the spirit fall more upon our people. Love to see everybody just get up and dance and saw a couple people in the back. They were, they were having a good old time. And while our kids are up front having a good old time. And, and you know, it's just, it should be a place where God comes and descends upon his people. And, and, and from our worship flows everything else. From our worship flows the healing, f- flows the words of prophecy, flows everything else. So if we can get our hearts in alignment, everything else is gravy, baby. Mm-hmm. If I can be Baltimore, right? So thank you. Uh, Neil? And you. And Vin, and you. yeah, please. <laughs> and then we're going to just take a few minutes. We have a ceremony, and, and Nicole's going to come read something short. Um, um, these two have been, you know, they, they really helped create a very strong infrastructure for us at TLC. They, their life has been in servitude. They've come from church. They're Pat, PK kids, sort of. I know Neil is, but Jamie's mom and dad. I know them so well. They're servants as well. Um, they've been really honorable in a lot of their um, proceedings. I just think about that all the time with you. I just think about justice and righteousness. I tell you that all the time. I love them. They're an integral part of who we are and where we're going to go. And we're really glad that you're here. So, Jamie and you. I guess I have to go first. Um, First, I know you don't like us starting like this, but I have to say it. I am so thankful. I am so blessed um, still to be a part of this ministry. And... I have very, very high hopes for the future. I am so excited. Um, Kids ministry started out great. Um, We had a couple bumps in the row, but I think we're ironing those out. I know know that it will change with time and with your guidance and your help and your suggestions. But, um, yeah, we're very excited of what the future holds. We're getting ready to start a youth group. (coughs) <coughs> not youth group, a youth class. And um, so we're, we're looking forward to that, to finally be offering something for that age group. <laughs> and hopefully soon after that branch into the 20s. But um, aside from that, where am I coming from in this? I have learned so much from your kids. I am learning to love them 
more and more every week. Um, when we first started this ministry, <laughs> Neil, Neil had mentioned that we'd all have to be in the back for several months working as a team, so we had a good consistency down. That way, when one of, one of us were out, the others could just take over and know exactly what, because, you know, kids, they work best with consistency. And so we thought, we thought that would be the best way to do it. And in thinking about being back with the kids weekly um, and not out here with you guys and getting the word that you're getting, getting the worship, I loved, I still love being out here. But um, it, it came as like, ah, uh, I don't know, but okay, you know, we'll do this. And ever since I took that role, um, God has just placed this joy in my heart every Sunday. I come and I look forward to being back there with your kids. I really do. Um, and um, I look forward to it every week from now on. And no, I'm not. We're getting ready to start a rotation, so you should be able to see me and Neil in here more often. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm kind of like like I was when we first started. Like, oh, no, I don't I don't know if I can be out there. I want, <laughs> I want to be back there. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I love it in here. Yeah. But um, I think I'm talking too much now. <laughs> but, yeah, I am learning so much from the kids. Um, we live in a backwards kingdom. The kids are the greatest in mm -hmm. the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like kids' ministry is such a great promotion mm -hmm. to, um, to tackle. I love it. Yeah. Amen. I look forward to the future. Amen. Uh, she makes my job easy, by the way. Um, I'm the one that's usually behind the mic screaming, hollering, dancing, you know, trying to get the kids involved. She's the one that works behind the scenes and all the logistics of it. Right here, okay, um, and I appreciate I appreciate what she does um, so much. Um, I am not gonna say how grateful I am for TLC. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, no, I really, honestly, I, I we we are extremely excited. Um, we we enjoy being in here. We like the kids being in here. I'm sure that you guys enjoy the kids being in here for worship. Um, but I did want to make a point out. How many of you seem just a little distracted because the kids are in here? Just a little bit? Just a little? Just a little? Um, and, and, and really, it's kind of good that you're seeing that because... Kids Ministries, what we do back there is so that you guys can not have to worry about what your kid's doing or hearing the kids or doing whatever. We're back there. We're having our good time in the Lord mm -hmm. so that you guys can be afforded the opportunity here. And I know that Carol uh, went ahead and stole my thunder, ah, but I'm glad she did. We, we are always looking uh, for help, always, always. And just so you know, the more hands, you know, you know many hands... Make light, make light work. work, right? Right. So the more the more help we have, the easier it is. Um, and 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 just so you know, that it's a very very important ministry uh, back there. Not just because we're feeding the kids, but because it affords all the adults to kind of be in here to to not be distracted. And uh, and so just so you know, uh, we will be knocking on your door, like Carol said. No, we won't be. We won't be. No. And, and can I just say this? I'm sorry. I'm kind of going off. Yeah. This is what I do. I'm sorry. Um, we're not looking for your back, if you know what I mean. We're looking for your heart. Um, we're, not, we're not looking to get to just have laborers. We, we want your heart. You know, we want, we, want you, we want you to understand that TLC as a whole, and I know this is going to come from, from the, you know, the head down. TLC is all, we're, look, we're all about community here. This is a family. Uh, and so we're not, we're not looking just to, just to hand out responsibilities, even though that's part of a family. There is responsibility in family. But the main part of family is just to love on each other, to have each other's heart, to, have, to, to understand, to encourage one another, to bless one another, to cry when we cry, to, you know, to laugh when we laugh, just to, just to be that part. And, and really, we're looking for your heart. You know? we're, we're looking. And once, once you actually open yourself up to TLC, trust me, there's no going back. <laughs> Okay, there really isn't. Once you really allow yourself to be vulnerable and to actually be a part of community here, you're you're not gonna want to go anywhere else. This this is home for a lot of us. This is family for a lot of us. And so I just want to throw that in. But Jamie said we we got a lot of new stuff on the horizon. We're gonna be partnering up with some other uh, you know 
departments here, maybe doing some outreach with the kids, having the kids involved with that. We are starting uh, youth ministries, um, middle school and high school. That's going to be right around planning the corner. It, planning trips. Yes, we're looking yep. to already plan a trip uh, for both age groups, actually. And so, you know, there's a lot of things going to be coming up. And we just ask, we just ask you for your heart and to support and to uh, not not just for us as leaders but for but for the children for for everyone from nursery the whole way up through Amen. through 12th grade Amen. oh and, and neil said that um he doesn't want to be a, a burden or like we, he doesn't want your back so to speak so like and when you hear that you might think okay well i don't want to do children's ministry so he doesn't want me well we are you could be like me. <laughs> you you could get involved with it and it totally change your perspective altogether. So just give it a week. Give it a give it a week. Just tell us you want to just give it a try. You want to just sit back in in Sunday school. And just watch teacher because Sunday school you don't miss the service at all. So Shannon. Hey, we got somebody's heart here. Uh, I was just um, totally understanding and agreeing with what Jamie said because even having, you know, I'm a kindergarten teacher. It's what I do all week. So when I get here Friday, I want to kick back and just breathe and I want to help because I feel like I should because <laughs> it's what I do okay. with kids. And so I feel like it'd be wrong not to. But at the same time, you know, and I was even a um, teacher at, you know, pre wasn't really preschool, but a Sunday school teacher at the other church. And when we came over here and their ideas for what we were going to do were so much bigger. I really got scared, and I sent several emails like, I don't think we can do this, I don't think I can do you know, and have you thought about this and this and this, and I had all these worries about how much more work it was going to be, and in just such a short time, uh, it's a lot of fun, it's much, I don't know, they've got so well organized and so well run, and so many good resources that um, even after I've been with five-year-olds all week, I really enjoy teaching back there, oh, even more than I did when we were at the other church, it's a much better setup, much better environment, much more support, and um, it's it's not hard. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, I'm going to have Neil stay here. Would you stay? I need uh, uh, Crystal in the middle, Crystal Pence in the and middle. Dan. I need Dan on the other end. Um, I just want to say to you that as we um, announce to you um, three new pastors, these all already are pastoring. Crystal is also uh, taking care of children on a daily basis, teaching people, having, uh, and, and, and she is my beautiful daughter-in-law, which I'm so proud of her. Um, so we've been together forever. But um, these guys today, ceremonially, we, we would like to um, lay hands on them with your blessing. Thank you so much for participating in the service. If you came to get something, this was your, your time to really see what the vision is, see if you fit in that vision, and to maybe give something to us today in that when we lay hands on them, we don't lay them um, haphazardly or without uh, consideration. We've watched them. We've been with them. We know their character. We, they fill every bill. They're not perfect. In fact, they don't know everything, which is why they're going to be great pastors. Um, and today, um, David and I would like to wash their feet because in the washing of the feet, here's what happens. And this is something that is very ceremonial. We ask them in our time together to be honest about their dirt. Washing feet is a very dirty thing. It's a very humbling thing. When Jesus was getting to, ready to leave, he took off his cloak, he took a towel, and he washed his apostles' feet. And he says, I want you to do likewise. He says, I want you to humble yourself. And one day, they'll be doing this for somebody else that they're going to be sending off. It is absolutely sacred. It's very ceremonial. It's very humbling. But know this. The greatest among us are going to be servants. You're looking at three servants. We'd like to serve them now, and we'd like to wash their feet, send them on their way with a blessing. We will bless them, and my husband will charge out of the building and run to the airport because they're having a fly-in. But um, I want you to know that this is a very sacred moment. As we wash their feet, Nicole is going to read some sediment about what washing feet means. At that time, as a congregation, we ask you to join with us in prayer that whole time, blessing them, sending forth proclamations, praying over them, asking God to open the heavens for them, because you're going to release blessings to them. We're just going to go through the ceremony that Jesus stated for us to do, and, I, and it should be very touching. We thank you for your time that you've given us today to share our vision and our time with um, what we see happening. But you're looking at three new pastors from TLC. You're looking at fruit. 
So come on over. Doug, if you'll bring that over. You got to take your shoes off, gang. Like Kathy said, I, I deal with children every day, too. And I, um, over the summer, um, I deal with a, another group of kids than what I normally do during the school year. But I had the privilege of dealing with school-age kids this summer. And Brayden here, who comes to church with Miss Denise, um, he don't come every Sunday, but he comes a lot. And he is back in the kids' ministry with Neil and everyone. But I got to be with Brayden all summer. And with my job, I did a Bible devotion with the kids every morning. And he is so, he questions everything. Everything I said, he questioned. Well, Crystal, if God's God, then why didn't he just kill Satan? Like, why is, he just, why is there Satan if he's God? I mean, he would ask really good questions. And I'm like, well, okay. I'm like, and he loved to read the Bible. So I went and I got him um, the Action Bible. And I gave it to him about, I think it was about the middle of August, wasn't it? And... I haven't seen him because now he goes to school in Chambersburg, so I don't get to see him as much at all. This is the first time I've seen Brayden for a month. And he was so excited to tell me that he read the whole Bible already. One month, this child has read from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, isn't that amazing? And I was so proud of him that he, he has a hunger for it. And that taught me, like, we all should have that hunger. If a child who is, what grade are you in, Brayden? third grade can read a Bible in one month, why can't I? Um, really, ask yourself. I mean, so that has been in my spirit all day since he's told me that. I'm just so proud of him and what God's going to do in his life. I mean, he is just so hungry, and it's so great. It's, I'm, just, I'm just thankful that I was able to witness that. Thank you. Amen. If we had Justin or some kind of music on, that would be awesome, really low, something light as, uh, as uh, Nicole reads. We were discussing during this time in history, not that they're all that pristine today, but in the first century, people wore sandals and the grime and dirt of the world would accumulate on their feet. And during this time, when Jesus was in Jerusalem, there was a massive influx of people. So the trash would be widespread on the streets, the animals would be leaving their filth in the roadway. By the end of the day, people's feet were covered, covered in dust, grime, and the filth of the streets. Foot washing was done by the lowest of the low because it was a vile task. Even the slaves in the homes wouldn't be allowed to wash people's feet because it was so demeaning and disgusting. Thank you, Father. So it was very disconcerting to the disciples that Jesus took on the role of washing their feet. Peter said what was on everyone's heart when he exclaimed that Jesus would never wash their feet, but Jesus was going after more than just cleaning their feet. Foot washing was about being in covenant with relationship with one another and with Jesus. To be a part of Jesus, they needed to have their feet washed. And Jesus wasn't saying that cleanliness is needed to be in the kingdom. Jesus was saying that we need to be willing to bear the ugliest parts of our lives and the dirtiest parts of our lives to each other and to God. We must be willing to share our wounds, our weariness, our worries, so that only Jesus can make them clean. Jesus will wash away your spiritual dust, your dirt, your wounds. Jesus will wash away our daily grime that we pick up on our lives. We walk around in our daily lives collecting things that weigh down our soul. We collect shame, regrets, hostility, and we don't like to show that to one another. And then on Sunday mornings, we usually put our best foot forward. We put on our nice clothes, our nice shoes. We put on our best face as we go to worship God. We cover up our dirtiness. We can become competitive with others around us to appear clean. We try to give off the air of having it together and not having any dirt behind the scenes. Will we let Jesus wash our feet? Peter expressed what is usually on our heart. We don't want our dirtiness to be seen. We don't want it to be handled by other people. But Jesus wants us to be in such intimate community with him. And if we're honest with ourselves, 
We know that Jesus is the one who can clean our dirt, our grime on our souls. He can heal the wounds that's been ripped, that's just ripped our lives apart. He can calm our worries, give us the energy in our weariness. We only have to just let him. Jesus wants us to wash each other's feet. In many communities of people, try, they try to hide their dirtiness from the outside world. We don't want to stand up. We don't want to say how broken we are, how desperate we feel. We want to put on a good show, competing, contrasting with others. But Jesus wants us to wash each other's feet, helping them to deal with their wounds and their worries. Instead of competing and contrasting, we are to care for one another. Jesus wants us to wash the feet of the broken world. We're supposed to uncover the infected areas of this world and be the hands of Jesus as they wash this world. We should seek out the broken in this world and help them realize the community that they can have in the kingdom. Let the Lord have your last say in your life, not your experiences. We all have shame and we try to hide our woundedness from the world. But Jesus says that we don't have to waste our energy doing that. We can be free, free with one another to share and to receive the things that are on our minds. We can receive healing. The only question is, is will we allow Jesus to see and heal those parts of our lives? So today, what we do is the Bible says, Father, bless David as he goes, or you're going, okay, come, come, come. Um, as the Bible says that we're not to be hasty on the impartation and the laying on of hands, I want to remind you three as we stand here that after Peter understood how incredibly weak he was in the presence of God when he thought he was so strong and he denied him three times and then he hid his face in shame and upon Jesus' resurrection he said, tell Peter to come to me. And on that very faithful day while he was fishing at the, at the lake, um, Peter knew that that was Jesus at the shore. And when he saw it was the Lord, he ran to him. And they had a meal together and they broke bread. And he says, Peter, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, then feed my lambs. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. He said, Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And there's so much to that story, but he said, feed my sheep. Peter, for the first time, was aware that it wasn't about his love for the Lord, but about Jesus' love for him. This day, you're going forward with his love, his promise, his wholeness, his truth, his strength, his prophetic power that is in you. And it's not about your love for him. It's about His love for you and recognizing you this day in a community being set forth to say, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So this day, we pray. Family, pray with me together with your hands pressed forward. Father, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon them, and He has anointed them to preach the gospel of the good news to heal the brokenhearted, to set free those who are captive, to release the oppressed, to restore sight to the blind, and to proclaim that this is the favorable year of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, this day, we recognize you through the Life Center as shepherds pastors and trusted servants of the kingdom. The greatest among you will be the best servant. The greatest. We love you guys. We love you. Let's thank God. Can I, can I show you yes. I love you. Am I on? Love you, Pastor. Uh, hopefully I can hold it together here just so I can get this out. This is, um, it, it, foot washing is kind of a weird experience if, you, if you've never done it. Um, it really is kind of strange if you think about it. Um, but let me just tell you what I thought of when I was doing this. It's, it's kind of weird. I really honestly felt like I was Peter. Like, um, what are you doing washing my feet? You know what I mean? 
Like we, we are honored. And here I go. I said I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. We, were, we are so honored to serve under such two great pastors. And I'm sitting there thinking, what the heck are you doing? You know, like, seriously, I was Peter. I should be washing your feet. You know, I should be the one serving you and supporting you and, and just kind of, you know, and they're doing this. And I really felt like Peter. But you know what Jesus said through the whole process? He's like, you know, Peter, if you don't let me do this, you have no part of me. And it's that sense of that vulnerability, like just that willingness to be vulnerable. And we all have a hard time doing it. We all want to put up, you know, our airs. We all want to put up our defenses. We want to be strong. You know, we want to show strength. But there is a sense of that vulnerability. And when I finally like went through that story in my head and I just allowed myself, you know, you're right. You know, I need to allow them to do this because we are in community. We are in family. But unless I let them them do that, I am, I, you know, I cannot truly be a part of the TLC family. And there was just this sense of just the presence of the Lord that comes down and knowing that just like, just like Pastor Kathy prayed, you know, it's not just that we love him, but that he, he loves us. Yeah. And it's in that vulnerability to open up that you really receive the love, yeah. that you really let it wash over you. And it's a very humbling, but it is wonderful experience. Yeah. And we might not, everybody might not be doing foot washing, but I tell you what, we can take a few seconds right here and right now, and we can imagine that, and we can walk through that story, and we can all be the Peters in here and just totally be vulnerable and let Jesus wash our feet spiritually, yeah. let his love flow over us. Amen. Just in the, I know everybody's hungry. We all want food. Trust me, my stomach's growling. But can we take just a few seconds? Because it is such a wonderful, wonderful thing to actually allow his love to wash over us. Yes. Just a few seconds, guys. So I want to bless the food and bless you, and I want to ask you to get in the game. If you're not in the game, get in the game. And for those who are in the game, be refreshed by God's love for you today. 
It's not about what we do for him, it's about what he's done for us. And from that, all of our energy, power, and love flows. We're so grateful for the visitors that came here today. Thank you for letting us boast and talk about our past. But join us next week so that we can go into our future. We love you. You did a great job, Nicole. So thankful for you guys. God is good, isn't he? All right. Father, thank you. Bless this food. Bless our conversation. Bless our fellowship. And may we be so bold as to share to somebody at Fuddruckers that TLC is the place you need to be. Amen. <laughs> God bless you guys.